83 to 85 percent of the immune system is in the gut for an obvious reason. This is where the interior of your body is most susceptible to problems outside the body. Now you've got a barrier of skin that covers you up that protects you from the outside world, but you bring that outside world into your mouth every time you eat. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Jack. Uh, yes, welcome back to the Forbidden Doctor podcast. Now, Mary is getting ready to go somewhere, and I had some things on my mind I really wanted to get over, and I didn't want it to be very long. So I'm doing this podcast for you guys. It's just me. I kind of called it, you know, Dr. Jack on a roll. And there's some points, very good points that I want to hit here because of some things that have recently happened to some people we know. Um. You, you have to be in charge of your health. You have to be in charge of your health. I have neglected my health most of my life. In a couple of months, I'm going to be 68. Uh, because of standard process and because of what Mary and I have been doing for the last 20 years, I've turned that around quite a bit. Uh, even here at, on the eve of 68, I think I feel better than I did at 48, maybe even better than I did at 38. And... I mention that not in the sense of bragging. I'm mentioning this because we have a patient, a very unwilling patient. It's because his wife drug him in. It's his wife gets him to do this. His wife court gets him to do that, that he doesn't want to do. And he's very in a very serious condition in a hospital right now. And he hasn't done uh, hardly anything that Mary has counseled him to do. Uh, virtually nothing. And his wife, on the other hand, is in excellent health because she's been doing exactly what she knows that she needs to do. And the first thing to do is that you have to, you have to be in charge of your health. Let me give you an example. The gut in your body, and you've heard Mary and I talk about this endlessly, I think. And we have several podcasts on the gut, but the, the gut in your body is like the roots of a tree. And it's, the, you know, the soil versus the flora. We have several pine trees around our house. Some of them are just gigantic. We've, we've lived in this house for 14 years, and we planted these trees. They're all the, the pines. We have some quakies, but it's the pines I'm talking about. And some of them are just huge, and others are kind of spindly. And it's the soil. It's the soil that made the difference. Now, I did not know that going in because I wasn't a herbologist. Um, is that the correct term? I don't know. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that the gut of your body is like the roots of a tree. And it pulls nutrients out of the gut, out of the, the lumen, the hole through the, you know, the passageway, the tube through your gut through the gut wall into the bloodstream. And the better that material is, it's pulling through into the bloodstream, the healthier you're going to be. The taller these pine trees are going to be. The better they stand against the wind, the better they stand against the bugs that bother them. And speaking of bugs, there was this uh, study, it, you know, it came out some time ago. It, it's not a, uh, a brand new one, but it was done by a bunch of Scandinavian scientists. And they were able to determine through genetic study and genetic research, 90% of the genes in our bodies are flora and bacterium. 90% of the genes in our body are the genes that are in plants and bacteria. Hmm. We are only about 2%, I think it's less than 2% genetic um, structure from several mammals that exist. In other words, there's less than a 2% difference between us and a lot of the four-footed creatures. But 90% of us is the same as the plants and the bacteria. And as a result, the way I look at that, as I look at these pine trees out here and the trees that are in good, healthy soil and get plenty of good water are the healthiest trees. The trees are still getting a lot of water, but they're not in the healthiest of soils. And if I had known that 14 years ago, I would have done something to condition the soil. 
but I know that about me now. So I do something to condition my soil. I'm whispering because I don't want to, she doesn't know I'm doing this. Now, your body knows how to work out every single detail of your physiology. It's in the genetic code. It's in the intelligence that exists inside your body. Your genes were the blueprint. Your genes didn't make your body. Your genes, any more than blueprints make a house. It was just the guiding structure outline of how your body was going to end up looking. Some of you, or most of you, are probably in families of multiple children. How many of you look alike? Well, you know, you take a family, say six kids. One or two of those kids are going to look very closely the same, even though they may be years apart. But most of them are going to look very different, even though they came from the same source. Because the intelligence that was a part of that creation, that, that spark of conception, guided the structure of that body using that blueprint. But there's some very, there's some vibratory uh, vibrations. This gene was used, that gene was used. Um, just like you're building a house. Where are we going to paint that wall over there white? And I want the ceiling a little off white, but we want the wall white. And somebody else coming in using those house plans may say, no, I want, yeah, I want it more cream colored. You get, you get the idea of what I'm talking about here. And this intelligence inside of you knows how to work out every detail of your physiology. It just needs the raw material to do so. So you often hear Mary referring to Hippocrates' famous quote, you know, that all disease begins in the gut. And, of course, all healing begins in the gut. And the beginning of disease in the gut comes with a breakdown of this flora that I'm talking about. The beginning of disease in this one tree that's in our yard is because of the breakdown of its nutritional supply coming out of the soil. Now, a tree expert has looked at it and said, you may have those little tiny bugs that live underneath the bark that's causing this problem. He wasn't sure. He wanted several hundred dollars for, you know, to be able to determine everything. But is that, did that bug only find that tree? What about the two trees that are on each side of it that are less than three feet away on either side? What about those bugs? Didn't, or those trees, didn't those trees get the same bug? Of course they did. The bugs are everywhere. But the one tree was susceptible to it because it wasn't as healthy as it should be. The beginning of disease in our bodies comes from the breakdown of the soil that our blood extracts its nutrition from. And that soil is in our gut. And the loss of, the loss of gut flora, the, the, the breakdown of healthy gut flora in the gut, one of the, one of the um, almost immediate side effects is the loss of B vitamins. Your, your gut makes almost all the B vitamins you need. And this shows up in the body with kind of pale and pasty looking skin. When you do not have the richness of the B vitamins that your body requires, you're going to end up with some very pale and pasty skin. And so when we have patients who come into the clinic, uh, and we see this, I know right away. I mean, the people who come in for the first time for consultations or whatever else, I can tell right away what's going on here. They're, and if they're deficient in B vitamins, they're probably deficient in several other things. And connecting back to the gut one more time, remember that about 83 to 85% of your immune system is in your gut. And the um, aspects of your, your the white, they're, they're, there's something called TH and TH2, two different aspects of your immune system. I don't want to get into a bunch of techno babble here or I'll, or I'll lose you as well as myself. But 83 to 85% of the immune system is in the gut for an obvious reason. This is where the interior of your body is most susceptible to problems outside the body. Now, you've got a barrier of skin that covers you up, that protects you from the outside world, but you bring that outside world into your mouth every time you eat. And that outside world is bringing in viral elements, it's bringing in bacterial elements, it's bringing in things that can cause all kinds of problems, let alone what's in the water and what's in the food and what's floating around in the air. And it gets into the gut. That's where the major defensive forces of your immune system are located to protect you. Nature doesn't trust you to eat correctly. Can you imagine that? So as a result, this tremendous immune power exists inside the gut to protect you from 
essentially to protect you from yourself. Um, some of the estimates I've seen are as many as 1,600 different microbes exist inside the gut. And they're not all good. A lot of them are not good. But the good ones, if your nutrition is sound, control the bad ones. When the nutrition is bad and the good ones do not get what they need to be the strong element of the gut, the bad ones can take over. And that's when all kinds of digestive and all kinds of um, other kinds of immune compromise problems begin to show up. And I know that what I'm talking about here is not an easy thing. The quest for superior nutrition has never been easy. We, um, I think Mary has a picture of Charles Russell's book, uh, or picture in her book that she's completing. And um, I think we've talked about this in podcasts before, the picture of the Indian brave on the back of the, um, of the pony, and he's got his bow uh, pulled to the ex- as far as it'll go for this long three, four-foot arrow as he's coming up on the neck of the buffalo. And <clears throat> this picture is uh, displayed at the Standard Process West headquarters over in Colorado. And they put up the slogan underneath the picture, the quest for superior nutrition has never been easy. And it's just as true as it is today. I mean, it's just as true then as it is today, or I, got, I think I got that backwards. In other words, today, the quest for superior, superior nutrition has, is just simply not easy. Even in a family of four, even if both parents work, and that gets to be the common thing anymore, where both parents are, in fact, working, it's not easy to make sure that family gets superior nutrition. We're kind of left most of the week, maybe Monday through Friday, eating out of a box, a bag, and a can. Kids eat their breakfast out of a box. They end up eating a processed school lunch, and they come home and have dinner out of a box, a bag, or a can. And when you look at the proliferation of degenerative diseases in the country today, and this is 2018, nutrition plays a very strong part of that. Now, we, I have um, patients I take care of where they have limited refunds or fun, uh, limited funding resources for food. But I've been able to show them, and I've learned this from other patients who've, who've taught me, that buying organic and buying good, clean meats and good, clean food, even though it, the price is a little more expensive, you're not nearly as hungry. And it goes further. Just something I wanted to point out. Um... I think I've said most of what I want to say here, but I want to tell you a little story about the difference between, um, let me, let me, uh, let me proceed it with this. What doctors are not up on, and I'm talking about medical doctors because, um, I keep having patients completely confused between what Mary and I tell them and what our nutritionists tell them and the poo-pooing they get from their medical doctor about what we have to say. Now, it's not a battle battle of wills, and it's certainly not a battle of wits because they come so terribly unprepared. It is simply what medical doctors are not up on. They are down on, unfortunately. Now, there's a kind of a new breed starting to show up who are considering something besides drugs for everything and drugs for anything. But um, I saw this magazine picture the other day that was uh, highlighting some spa somewhere, some Caribbean spa. And there's this lady laying down on a kind of like a massage table on her back. And she's kind of out in the sun. And she's laying there with um, a a slice of cucumber over each eye. And... Uh, she has some kind of uh, mud smeared all over her face, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's to moisturize the face, and it's cucumber-based. And there, are, there may be benefits to that. I don't know. I, I'm not into that stuff. But I certainly don't poo-poo it if, if, if it works. But I've always thought, here's what medical doctors think about nutrition. 
Here's a very good example of what medical doctors think about nutrition. You laying on your back with mud on your face in a spa somewhere with sliced cucumbers over your closed eyes. In March 16, 2003, in the New York Times magazine, you know, uh, most larger newspapers on Sunday will have a little Sunday insert, kind of like the Sunday magazine. Well, the New York Times has that. And this date in particular, March 16th, 2003, Lisa, Lisa Sanders, the medical doctor, is talking about her medical education, I believe at NYU, but I, I may be wrong. And she's talking about some of the procedures and processes and the curriculum and some of the things they had to go through to get their medical degree. And she talks about the white coat ceremony. And most medical schools have this when you're a freshman in med school your first year. And you're congregating together, kind of wondering, gosh, what have we got ourselves into? And or, or I, I can't wait, let's, let's get to our first class. And you're brought into this congregation of, in a big auditorium of all the, the brand new doctors or students. And the dean of the medical school, she said, walked out and spoke to us. And he said to them, and this is really amazing, she says to him, what we are about, to, half, half of what we are about to teach you is wrong. Unfortunately, we don't know which half. Now, that may you may be nodding your head or you may be shocked by that or anything else, but you can go read it for yourself. March 16, 2003, the New York Times Magazine. Now, I want to jump back to the, what I started with here, and then I'm going to bring this to a close here pretty quick. The difference between living and dying, the difference between being healthy and and something less than that is what stands between you and the microbial kingdom that lives in the gut. And that microbial kingdom needs the right kind of food, the right kind of fertilizer, the right kind of nutritional substances to make sure the good bacteria thrives and can control the bad. Now, the bacteria that was instilled in your gut, implanted when you were a baby, and a lot of that depends on the health of your mother and the health of your grandmother because these things continue through the generations. And whether you were born vaginally or whether you were born cesarean, whether you were nursed or whether you weren't nursed has an awful lot to do with how your gut got started as a, as a newborn. And what was embedded in the wall of the gut then is still there. Hopefully it was the good stuff but it still needs to be fed the good stuff. And the more we neglect that, the more I neglect this pine tree in my yard that's having some serious growth problems. Now, I want to tell you, no, I think that's enough. I think that's a, I think that pretty well covers what I wanted to get into. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to talk to you about these things. A couple more things that I want to bring up and uh, bring to your attention is in um, Mary's Almost Through with a Book. And um, I want to, we found an incredible way to help people. We found an incredible way to find out what's going on inside their bodies and an incredible way to be able to help them. And it's simply with the symptom survey that we offer on the homepage at ForbiddenDoctor.com. It's free. There's no obligations. All you need to do is fill it out and send it in. And it's very comprehensive. In fact, maybe the most comprehensive survey you ever take because it hits all the different um, systems of the body. It has tons of questions. And after you're done, you have the opportunity for another free thing, a 30-minute phone consultation. And you'll be given a personalized protocol. We'll tell you what we th we'll tell you. Our nutritionist will tell you based on the policies and the understanding that Mary and I have established in the clinic because she's our head nutritionist. Um, the kind of protocol that may help you with what the results of your symptom survey point to 
and you'll get a free 30-minute phone call consult to go with it. And you'll be given this personalized protocol, which saves you money in the long run because you're not taking supplements you don't need. And all of this is at no charge to you. And if you do decide to purchase the recommended supplements, and you don't have to up to this point. I mean, we're still friends. You can walk away at this point and we'll still be friends. But if you decide you want to get the recommended supplements, you can get them at a 10% discount if you sign up for the Text Blast. And these text blasts give you fantastic coupons every single week. Every single week a new one comes out. You just text the word healthy to 41411. You put healthy in the line on the bottom where you would be writing in, you know, hi, mom, how you doing? And up at the top where mom's phone number would be, the only thing you put in is 41411 and send it. And then you will get a coupon code that will come back to you that you can use at the website, ForbiddenDoctor.com, when you check out for a 10% discount. Or you can just call the office, 801-423-1890, and they can help you sign up for the next blast. And remember, it's your patronage of these offers that keeps this podcast coming. So um, even if you've done it before, you know, don't you, you can... Tell other people about this. If, if you're having a problem with the very thing that I talked about in this podcast, at the bottom of the survey, when you fill out the symptom survey, write in the problem. I have irritable bowel syndrome. I have ulcerative colitis. I have Crohn's disease. I have uh, alternating uh, um, diarrhea and constipation, or I've been constipated all my life. Write these things in there because that gives us a much better idea of what we might suggest for you to have. And so thanks, everybody. And yeah, please go to iTunes and rate this podcast. I mean, if you like, if you've liked what you've learned so far, go back to iTunes and rate it. We would appreciate that. I mean, let's get us in the top of the new and hot podcasts and podcasts. And with your simple rating, we can rise in the ranks. So if you guys, if you've enjoyed this at all or enjoyed any of them, please go to iTunes and leave some feedback or just rate us. It would be much appreciated. And don't forget to tell your family and friends to take our free symptom survey at ForbiddenDoctor.com to find out where they are in this whole thing. And the same deal is for them that we're offering for you. No charge. All of these things for no charge. And so the last little piece of house cleaning I need to do, the statements that I have made in this podcast about specific products have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided or any information contained on or in any product, label, or packaging of this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. Thanks for listening to this forbidden information and Mary's and my forbidden podcast. Join us next time for another in-depth discussion of forbidden knowledge, and we will, we will see you then. Thank you for listening to the Forbidden Doctor podcast. If you are curious about long life energy enzymes or ageless thyroid, you can purchase them without a membership from our website at ForbiddenDoctor.com or get our enzyme formula from Amazon.com by searching the full term long life energy enzymes. Don't forget to take our obligation free symptom survey to get a free personalized supplement protocol recommended for you by Dr. Jack, Mary, or one of our qualified nutritionists. Take the survey, get a call from our nutritionist to create a protocol and a patient login, then use that login to see your own personal protocol along with any favorites you've saved from our symptom library. Remember, our website and our clinic are here for you always. Thank you.